So we've got a 12-team draft today on the Underdog Fantasy platform. Now, week two games are pretty much in the books. We've got one game tonight, but we're going to go through and do a full mock draft based on everything that's happened following the week two games. All right, so a lot of things change, a lot of rankings move, a lot of a lot of dancing happens, all right? So what we want to do is make sure we're up to speed with how drafts look now, okay? And the best way to do that is by doing some drafts on Underdog because every draft on underdog has at least a three dollar buy-in and that means people are taking it seriously because they will win money afterwards okay so i'm trying to figure out where i should put myself top left top right no you guys don't give a shit about me anyway so i'll just throw myself in the top right um how's everybody doing this is a private live stream draft so i've only dropped the link into our discord that's free to join if you want to be involved in our mock drafts going forward make sure you join the discord link is down below You'll get in there. I'll drop some links. You could draft with me. So I'm going to keep the big board up on the draft uh, the entire time. And I'm going to draft right off my phone. So I hope you guys are okay with that. And we will throw some comments and stuff up on the screen if they come in. If you all have any questions or concerns. Shocking. So nothing has changed through the first two picks after the first preseason. We are picking from the seven spot. This is a half PPR league. You start one QB. You start two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end and one flex. If you want to join these leagues, you can do so on Underdog Fantasy. Now we see Bijan go off at the 104. Now, listen, after this week's games, I really got no argument against it. Tomorrow's video, we do a full recap of every game in week two of preseason, talking about snap counts, talking about third and five, who's on the field, talking about receiver, routes, run, all that good shit. Tell you what, I came away extremely encouraged with Bijan Robinson. He looked so damn good, okay? Now I'm sitting here at the 107. Give me a sec. We'll talk about him in a minute. Wide receivers, nah. I kind of wanted to get Bijan here, but now that he's off, I can't get C-Mac. We can grab Kelsey at the 7. I don't like building my teams through tight ends, though. So I think what I'm going to do here is actually grab a running back because I don't feel comfortable with, like, A.J. Brown at the 107 and kind of move through afterwards. So, Bijan Robinson, he didn't get the start for whatever reason, but that's more of, like, a technicality. But if you watched him play, good Lord, did that guy inspire a whole generation of Falcons fans for the next half decade. He was making dudes miss. He looked exp – it was, it was actually uh, – it hurt my eyes watching Tyler Algier carry the ball and then Bijan get on the field afterwards. It was, it's almost like when you crack, like you wake up, right? And you crack the window a little bit and you're like, okay, there's sun out there. And then someone comes in and opens the, the whole window or they just like turn the main light on. And you're like, what the fuck was that? You just blew my eyes out. That's kind of what happens when like Bijan gets on the field after, um, after Tyler Algier. Bijan was catching the ball. He looked explosive. He looked great. So I got no doubt that this dude's going to run 60% of the routes, 70% of the routes and, and be such a monster in fantasy. Dan asks, are you moving Bijan above CMC? No. So in terms of my rankings, nothing really changed there. I already had Bijan as my RB3. I think I have C-Mac, Saquon, Bijan uh, in that order, and they have not moved at all. And they likely won't move before anything happens here, but we're almost on the clock. All right, so I'm kind of happy that I took Saquon in my first pick because we're going to get our choice of one of two wide receivers, Devontae Adams or Jalen Waddle. That's okay. Devontae Adams went off the board. Jalen Waddle, let's talk about Miami a little bit. Tua obviously looked a little bit shaky there at first. He threw that first pick, but then the next drive was kind of like a thing of beauty. He was throwing darts around. He got Tyreek Hill involved. Dorm Smythe is actually a 100% snap guy with Tua on the field, which is kind of like a low-key, sneaky sleeper there for uh, the tight end position. But um, Jalen Waddle and, and Tyreek Hill, my faith in them has not wavered at all this offseason. I don't care that he threw one interception to start the game and lit the whole fucking world on fire. But um, I'm in on Jalen Waddle here. So I really like this start. I, you know, you, it could have been something like Diggs and then Derrick Henry, but I actually think I like Barkley and Waddle more than I like Diggs and Henry. So um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more open to a running back in the first round than I was a couple of weeks ago where it was like I definitely want a wide receiver, but receivers have moved up so fucking frantically that even like the tier two guys, it's hard to get them at value. Someone asked about the rankings. Also, if you're here, all of our rankings are available to you guys in our draft guide, and that's another beautiful part of signing up for Underdog. If you sign up on Underdog with our code, you get our full draft guide absolutely free. So not only do they double your deposit, but they also email you out the draft guide absolutely free, which is updated throughout the summer. And I already have all my preseason write-ups in there and recaps so go to underdog fantasy download the app use promo code bdge when you put ten dollars or more onto your account they'll double it and send you the draft guide all right what else we got here derrick henry 
Chris Olave, Devontae Smith, Calvin Ridley at the 210. Wow, he's really fucking firing up draft boards, huh? We had Ramondre. So Ramondre, we saw him play every snap with the ones, which was, you know, not surprising, but we'll have to see what happens when Zeke plays. Mac Jones played 11 snaps. Ramondre played every single one of them. Did get a goal line touch, which was good. Turned it into a two-yard score, which is obviously nice to see because if Zeke comes, he's probably taking that type of work away from Ramondre. But if Ramondre is like, hey, listen, I'm better now. I'm better now. Don't sit me. My ass don't deserve the pine tar. Maybe he works into like a 50-50 split on the goal line, you know? Maybe that happens. So uh, Ramondre getting all the work looked looked good. So I still like him in like the third-ish round, probably closer to the end of the third round. Though. The, the middle end of the third round has gotten so difficult because of all like the nonsense with the running backs. Like JT with his like injury plus not showing up for camp, Josh Jacobs and him not showing up for camp. It's all gotten it's all gotten really, really messy. And it makes like the middle of the third round such a difficult spot to pick from. I think I know where I'm going regardless. So the top three QBs go off the board there. So not much movement in terms of those guys. A couple guys we're seeing move really quickly up the board. Cooper's at the three one now. I think it's more from like lack of options. At the wide receiver position here now in the third, uh, Jameer Gibbs at the 3-4, by far and away the earliest I've seen him go. There goes Jam uh, there goes Jonathan Taylor, unfortunately. So now I, I, I wanted to grab Taylor. I feel like he's starting to get like a crazy heavy discount. Um, we'll talk about him more in a sec after I make my pick. So I'm kind of teetering back and forth between Jacobs and DK Metcalf. Because this is a start three wide receiver league, I'm going to lean towards Metcalf. Why, who, who everything I've heard from camp is that he's just going bonkers out there and we could probably expect a nice little breakout even further so from him. So Jonathan Taylor, I kind of feel like, um, you know, Anthony Richardson is now the starter. So I think that it probably opens up holes for Taylor. I do, I, I do think that will lead to just such a severe lack of passing work in the, uh, backfield for running backs in Indy. So that makes me a little bit nervous for him, but I still think he's such an explosive player. Like any given run can can be taken to the crib for 70 yards where you can't say that for, I mean, you could say that for almost every running back that was drafted ahead of him already in this draft. Maybe not Ramondre, but like Gibbs can do it, Henry. But as you get deeper into the draft, like once you hit the third, fourth round past him, like nobody else is really giving you that play to play explosion. Christian Watson going three, nine is probably the earliest I've seen him go. I think, Listen, I think Green Bay's offense has looked incredible. I am I think every player on that offense is pretty much a value pick at this point. Jordan Love, breakout season incoming. I like Aaron Jones where he's going. Um I like Christian Watson. I love Romeo Dobbs and I love Luke Musgrave. They're all running a hundred percent of the snaps with Jordan Love on the field. They have a very clear defined role of who's playing where. When, who, what, when, where, why, and how. We're almost back up on the clock at 4-6. Joe Mixon makes me a little bit concerned. I feel like Chris Evans is definitely playing the Samaji P. Ryan role now, so I'm kind of off him in the early fourth round. Etienne, Jerry, Judy. All right, we're back up on the clock. We can grab a wide receiver here, grab a running back here. It's fun, like, this time of the year when, like, uh, Aaron Jones has played, basically in week one he played the first snap, and then in week two he played the first snap. So when he doesn't get run and doesn't make these big plays, everyone kind of, like, forgets about these dudes. Ayuk here. So those are my starting three wide receivers. I loved, I loved what I saw from the San Francisco offense. The video tomorrow, I already filmed it, like the entire week two preseason, uh, preseason cap, recap. Sorry, That's, I've, there's something wrong with me right now. Um, I started the entire video off. I didn't even intro. I didn't go into the first or second game. I went right into the San Francisco and Denver game because I think there were so many takeaways from there. One of my biggest ones, though, was just Brock Purdy looked fantastic. And I think this passing game is is going to be taken up another level. And I absolutely love Ayuk this year. So I'm in on Ayuk there. There's a couple other guys, obviously, I was keeping an eye on. But I do think there's some guys at running back that are more likely to get back to me in the fifth round than whatever was available there. I've usually been taking Justin Fields in the middle of the fourth. But as you can see, he's moving up a little bit. And I'll have to kind of just like adjust and, and take a middle-tier quarterback if I don't get one in round three or four. We have a question from Esco. Would you trade a Rich for Jordan Love and Pitts, 10-team super flex? So Anthony Richardson, I believe right now, let me check my rankings. I have Anthony Richardson as the QB, I think, 15 right now. And I have Jordan Love as the QB 20. And obviously Richardson has a lot of like week-to-week -week upside given his athletic ability. 
Um, Kyle Pitts doesn't really do it for me. So I, I think the gap between A. Rich and Jordan Love is probably a little bit bigger than Pitts, in my opinion. I like Love a lot, but like, there's no denying. While I'm not going after Anthony Richardson, he's not a target of mine. There's no denying that he could have a monster year based on his, you know, his profile, etc. Um, so I wouldn't do it. It would have to be a tight end in the tier above him, like Goddard. That might make me think differently. Um, Waller, maybe now following this weekend's games, but I, I wouldn't do that trade straight up. Man, the three, four running backs are crazy value. I think Mixon and Jacobs have the RB one potential, in my opinion. And Etienne was. I, I I really like caution you against throwing Mixon into this tier. Etienne and Jacobs for sure, but Mixon, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think exactly what we saw last year with Samaj P. Ryan, which made him such a which made him such a frustrating. I think is going to happen again with Chris Evans. I really, really do. Love and Andrews. That that's a trade I could definitely be talked into. I I would be very. I, I think I I would take the Jordan Love and and Mark Andrews side over Anthony Richardson. Yes. All right, nothing else too spicy. I like D Hop a lot more at the four twelve now that Traylon Burks is hurt. He sprained his LCL, which is a multi week injury, and you know mid August multi week injuries are never something you want to see. Mike Will, good pick. I like it. Almost back up on the clock. Oh, Justin Herbert went off the board. All right, we're going to sit on a quarterback here because Justin Herbert probably was my target. And there's one very clear, obvious choice to me here. I cannot stop drafting Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce is the bell cow there. I don't know how else to put it. CJ Stroud got the start again yesterday. Their starters played 14 snaps. Stroud ended up playing the first full half, but their starter starters actually played 14 snaps, the first two drives. And this is a stat I'll repeat in tomorrow's video if you watch it, so fucking don't hold it against me. Pierce played all 14 of 14 snaps, 100% of them. He also played four snaps that were third and five or fourth and five and longer. Last year, he played on 3% of those situations. Pierce was in on every down, the first two drives, pass catching, pass blocking, fucking or short yardage long yards it didn't matter Pierce is the workhorse there in Houston and I don't care how he looked in terms of like efficiency CJ Stroud was living under pressure guess what they're not playing with Laramie Tunsil they're not playing with half their offensive line that's what happens in the preseason they don't start a lot of their offensive linemen especially ones that are banged up um so don't worry about like the pressure that like Bryce Young is under and CJ Stroud is consistently under in these games they're not playing at full strength with their offensive line and even the backups for the D line are like rotational starting players so if you're sitting the offensive line, you're getting like backups. When you're when the defensive line is playing, they're playing rotational starter players. I don't know if that makes sense, but I promise it's the truth. Ah, fuck. There goes Dallas Goddard and Darren Waller off the board. All right, so so far we've got two running backs. We've got three wide receivers. I, I love the players that I have thus far. We have Saquon and Damian Pierce as our RB1, RB2. We have Waddle, Metcalf, and Ayuk as our wide receiver one, two, and three. And here's the other thing, guys. If you um, Even if you're not drafting on underdog, like if you're not drafting on a high-stakes platform, this type of platform, because everyone pays to get into the drafts, gets you so sharpened and ready for your draft on ESPN, NFL, Yahoo, because you start to see the values. Like you get muscle memory from doing these drafts. And then when you're on your clock in like an ESPN draft, you're like, holy shit, why is this guy available right now? Um, he shouldn't be because he's never available there. That always ends up happening. And it gets you really, really ready to dominate your friends. Okay, so we have three wide receivers, two running backs. We also have a flex spot. So honestly, right now, based on the way that the value is playing out, I think I like the wide receivers available more than I like any other position. Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson. I, I don't dislike either of them. So we'll go with Chris Godwin right now. Actually, fuck it. Give me Deontay. Ah, fuck, they took Godwin. Okay. Um, Deontay, I, the reason I went back and forth there, I kind of like Deontay just because Kenny Pickett seems like he's really, really on the verge of uh, – a big breakout this year in both preseason games. The Steelers have been just fucking red hot, just electricity in the air. Uh, pickets look great. And I think that's obviously going to lead to Deontay Johnson having a big year, but I also like Chris Godwin a lot. I, th I think about like Baker Mayfield and who he clicked with well in Cleveland. And it was always Jarvis Landry. And Chris Godwin is basically like a pumped up version of Jarvis Landry. We'll see uh, what kind of tight end action, what kind of QB action we can get in the next rounds, but I won't really push it because in a one QB league, like even if I do miss on, you know, 
Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson. I still like Tua. Dak's fine. Kirk's fine. Daniel Jones is fine. Like any of those guys will do. Probably Miles Sanders, Deontay Johnson, JSN. Uh, on Najee, why are people dropping Najee down to the 5'8"? Uh, because he's getting taken out on every passing down situation from Jalen Warren. And then Jalen Warren stayed in the game on the next first down with the starting team and busted off a 62-yard run. Najee Harris could never. He could never. That's the problem with Najee Harris is he never makes explosive plays, and now that they have a running back there that can and they really like him, he's going to play a lot. Jalen Warren is a massive problem for Najee Harris. Sanders, Deontay, James Conner, Jahan Dotson, Javante Williams. All right, we are now introduced to sixth-round Javante Williams. I think it's only a matter of time before he's fifth round, and in which that price I am out. Javante played. That was a big storyline of this offseason, right? Like, what's going to happen with Javante? He is 10 months removed from his ACL, his PCL, his LCL, being torn up surgery and now he's back on the on the playing field which is really really interesting um it was such an early comeback it was a pretty miraculous comeback and he looked good yesterday by all accounts i'm not gonna say he looked great but he caught a bunch of passes my problem again and you're gonna hear me repeat this probably so many times over the next couple of weeks is just samaj p ryan played all of the third and five fourth and five plus snaps against the Niners. That is the same role he had in Cincinnati that made Joe Mixon just so hard to deal with. If Javante Williams is not in a pass catching role, it's going to be tough to really like see what his upside is. And it's possible that, and listen, maybe they're more of like a pass the running back on early downs type team, but Russ also looked great running the ball. And if a team is really good at running the ball with their quarterback, they're unlikely to dump off a ton of passes to their running back on early downs. All right, so we're back up on the clock. Ingram just went. I really wanted to grab Ingram, but he is now off the board. And Joku, Pat looked great. Kincaid looked great. I think we can wait on tight end right now. I'm not overly uh, emphatic about David and Joku right now. Um, I'm going to grab T-Law. I'll grab T-Law as my QB. I think that that offense is going to pass the ball a shit ton. They were already like top 10 in basically every passing metric last year. Passing plays per game, just pace of play. All that kind of stuff. And now you add Calvin Ridley, I, I feel like they're going to be a problem on offense through through the air. I think it's everything is going to run through the air there. So T-Law, I could see going for like 35 passing touchdowns this year. Ken said, I like seeing his four targets. Yeah, Javante was really, really involved in the passing game yesterday. I, I was pretty surprised to see that. They started the game off right away with a screen to him that he dropped. But like nonetheless, they were running. They were writing up plays for him. So, yeah, it, listen, it was encouraging. And I went from uh, full fade on Javante to being okay with his seventh seventh round price but i promise you he's not going to stay there he's not going to be a seventh round pick for much longer um he'll probably move up to six which we just saw in this draft and then eventually he'll become a fifth round pick and uh and that's going to be too pricey for me I, I i don't care that he played in week two of preseason i i just think we're going to see a lack of uh third downs and that's going to be samaja pirine and we might just see a lack of explosion because again he's eight ten months removed from the acl tear Next year, next year, I'm all in. I'm all in on Javante Williams. This year, though, he will probably outprice me. Ooh, Cortland Sun at the 712. That's the earliest I've seen him go in a hot minute, but I I can't argue it. He was like one of the next guys up on my queue. Cortland Sun, I think, is going to be a big beneficiary. Russ looked great, bro. Russ looked slim. You could tell he was on that Atkins shit. He was on that fake subway diet. He was he was moving. He was scooting yesterday. Where did Alvin Kamara go? How fucking early did he? Go? Oh, he went seven five. Damn, I missed him too. All right, we're back on the clock. Um, at the eight six, we just took our QB. We could double down on QBs, but we ain't gonna do all that. Traylon Burke, Sky Moore, Michael Thomas. I don't love any of these options. I think I'm gonna grab my tight end right now. Pat looked great with Kenny Pickett yesterday. Pat looked real good. We moved Pat over. I think we're going to move Pat over in, in Joku. All right, so we grabbed our starting tight end, Pat. I'm going to be honest, I didn't love that. I just None of these guys that I like really fell to me, which makes sense given that I'm drafting with a bunch of dudes from my Discord and you guys tell that uh, you guys feed off of the guys that I like and then I never get to get the guys that I like when I'm drafting with you, which is really annoying, but still love you regardless, kind of. Judy going to be big values, I think. That Denver offense is going to bounce back big time. Well, here's the thing. Like, Judy's no not really a value anymore you know what I mean like he's going where'd he go in this draft he went at the four or five and I think he's going to go even earlier than that the more that they play together 
Like you can get Jerry Judy at the four five, and listen, seven twelve is the earliest I've seen something go. I think he was like a ninth round pick yesterday. You're going four to five rounds different, and honestly, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if they had near the same target share. So. Give me Sutton over Judy at value all day. But yeah, I, I agree. After watching them play yesterday, I'm a lot more in on on them. Thoughts on Rashad White? Feel like round eight is good value. I think I think rounds eight round eight is just right. I think I think their rush offense is going to be uh, terrible this year. I I think they're going to have a lot of trouble running the ball. And I don't know who's going to be. I know Rashad White's like a good pass catching back, but I also think like they might just use Chase Edmonds on third downs. I am I am. I'm I'm pessimistic on Rashad White, and I think that's kind of shown through to the rest of the fantasy industry clearly here. Um, him going now at the eight eight, so I, I, I'm pretty off Rashad White. I think he'd have to fall into like the ninth maybe for me to really like him. One guy I'm liking a little bit more, I, I will admit, is is James Cook. He's played so many snaps with the starters, man. He is he hasn't like looked incredible or anything, but like he's he's played enough that. Um, I, I got to take him a little bit more seriously, I think. Yes. Let's go, boy. I'm, I'm going to say this for you once, and I'm going to say it only like 100 more times after this. Romeo Dobbs needs to be on every one of your fantasy teams. Do not let this man fall. Do not, on the off chance, let him fall past you. Romeo Dobbs should be the four or five wide receiver on every one of your teams. He is, he is going to be so good this year. I'm telling you... Him and Watson and Musgrave are running every single route on this offense. Jane Reed is in there for half the time on slot routes when they do 11 personnel, but Romeo Dobbs has looked incredible. Romeo Dobbs' breakout from last season is back. It's back, baby. I'm thinking we're back. So now I feel real good about my wide receiver core. We've got Waddle, Metcalf, Ayuk, Godwin, and Dobbs. Running back Saquon and Damian Pierce, obviously super top heavy. We're gonna have to start getting a little crafty with it. But T. Law, Pat Fryermuth, I've drafted better. I think it's good all around. I don't think I have any holes in the team, but I think I've drafted teams that I, I think I'm a little bit more inspired by other drafts that I've had. Lifelong Bucks fan, I haven't taken White anywhere. Yeah, that makes sense. He's, I, I just, I don't know. I don't see a world where he's just like. Fucking incredible this year. I just see him disappointing, probably. Tua, James Williams, Pacheco, all the way down at 9-10. Man, how the mighty have fucking fallen. And I get it, too. Like, the longer he's out for, the more run Clyde is getting, and it's not great. I'm not scared of Clyde, but I would be if I was Pacheco. I'll grab Jamal Williams right now. With uh, Kamara out, Jamal's obviously going to get a shit ton of um, a shit ton of run. In those first three games. And I still think, I, I think this might end up being the same uh, kind of committee that we've seen a while from there, where like Kamara obviously gets a lot of early down work, gets a lot of pass catching work, but Jamal Williams, I could just see being a menace on the goal line. So I like his upside in best ball throughout the entire season. There we go. We're seeing a little tight end run here. Joku, Dalton Kincaid at 10 8, 10 9. I like Mike Evans still. Baker does throw a nice deep ball, and no one better than Mike at coming down with the catch. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm good with Mike Evans and. And Chris Godwin, because they're both going late as shit. You can get Godwin end of fifth. You can get where did I get Godwin in this one? I got Godwin six six, and then Mike Evans went. Mike Evans went five eleven. This actually might be the first time I've seen Evans go before Godwin, but I like both of them in the sixth seventh round. I'll take either of them. I think it's just going to be such a condensed target share. Like Baker's not throwing it to anybody else. All right, we saw Penny and Jalen Warren at the turn, guys. I I I really think you should be weary about Rashad Penny. I really feel like 10th round is not the the round for Penny. I, I think there's just as good a chance he gets cut as it is that he is an impact player for fantasy this year. And if you use a 10th round pick on a guy that get cut gets cut, you kind of you're throwing away your best ball league right there. Jalen Warren, I do like though. He will have a role certainly. Girl, let's go. All right, Raheem Mostert, my RB four. Raheem Mostert and the Dolphins. So Raheem Mostert was a starter for the Dolphins. Here's let's break down the entire backfield. Jeff Wilson is still not participating in the preseason games. He is back at practice though. So he injured something last week, got back at practice, um, but didn't play in the preseason game. Raheem Mostert got the start and looked good and got some goal line work. So clearly right now, I think they see Raheem Mostert as the starter until he gets injured, which is like fucking inevitable. But Devon A. Chain again is fifth on the depth chart. He continues to enter games behind every single running back in that depth chart. 
And the problem here is that Devon A. Chain left the game on a cart with a shoulder injury. This is probably similar to like the Dalvin Cook type shoulder injuries where once you start having them, they become a problem over and over and over again. And the problem with Devon A. Chain is he's so small that when these 250 pound linebackers continue to fall on you, they almost crush you. All right. So Devon A. Chain needs to move down significantly. He needs to be drafted after. I love that. Draft some ass. I'm fucking talking shit about him. After Raheem Mostert, after Jeff Wilson. Because not only is he down on the depth chart, but he's already pretty seriously hurt. He just got carted off. Let's not draft guys who get carted off the field on August 20th. Not good process. Um, So Mostert, playmaker, going to be a big part of that offense. And they really have Waddle and Hill, and that's kind of it. It's just it, it's an offense that you know is going to score in the top ten in the NFL. Yet no one wants to touch their running backs. Guys, Al Nazar's got to go too. Oh man, you guys need my video tomorrow fucking badly. You need it bad. All right, we're gonna take our. I didn't grab Jordan Love, so I don't want to keep stacking Green Bay wide receivers. I'm going to take. I mean, uh, I, I was thinking about taking Musgrave there, but I took Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson again, the starting tight end. Starting tight end in that Dallas offense. He rested yesterday. He rested with the rest of the starters, which is a great sign. Al Lazard is not the wide receiver two in New York. Corey Davis is. He was the wide receiver two in their first preseason game based on snaps with the starters. And then him and Garrett Wilson both rested this previous uh, yesterday. So Corey Davis is the number two there behind Garrett Wilson. Lazard and Michael Hartman are the three, four. So we need to stop drafting Lazard above Corey Davis, please. Thoughts on Jacoby Myers. Yeah, I mean, he he uh Jimmy G played on nine snaps yesterday. Jacoby Myers played on all nine of them with him, so I got no doubt that he's like the wide receiver two behind Devontae Adams, but I don't really know what that means. Um, let's not like pretend Jimmy G's performance was otherworldly. He was playing against the backup, the second string defense of arguably the worst pass defense in the NFL. So everybody relax. Um it's an uninspiring pick, but like he's he's probably going to be okay. He'll probably catch 65, 70 passes. I don't I don't mind Jacoby Myers like down here in the draft, not really at all. He, he's he's a very safe double digit round pick. Why isn't Irv Smith getting a chat? Was he just bad in mini, or because he's likely the fourth in line for targets in Cincy? Uh, I think it's kind of a mixture. We we haven't really ever seen him put together more than like a a successful month in the NFL. He keeps getting injured. He, he can't put together a full season of, like, high production. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he's going into a Cincy offense where it's like they they have so many players that produce at such high levels that there's not a lot of crumbs off the, off the cookie there. You got Chase and Higgins and even Boyd and, you know, Mixon and Chris Evans is going to get passing work. Like, it's just he's, you know, on a good day, he's like the fourth wide receiver. On a bad day, he might have zero catches, zero targets. I like like he's he's an exciting player that I think is probably a better like NFL player where he'll have good weeks and good plays for them, but almost nearly impossible to rely on him in fantasy. Um also Damian Harris. We need to talk about him. Latavius Murray has taken like the early down role. He is the short yardage back and the early down guy. There's not a lot of room for Damian Harris right now, coming back from that injury too. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. 13th round Michael Wilson. Joke's on you. He stinks. I feel like Higby. feel Higby like Ferguson is a great late round tight end. No competition. I Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I like Higby. I, I feel like Higby's kind of like showing us he's not good, though. That's my only problem. Jake Ferguson might not be good, too. But I think there might be some meat left on the bone that we don't know about. All right. I'm going to take Jeff Wilson. Yes. I've been sacking Jeff Wilson and Raheem Moser because you can get them so late in drafts. I'm going to be doing this in my regular, like, season-long leagues as well, not just best ball. I was thinking about going with somebody else here, but that's okay. We still got some value at that position left we could chill on. So, up to this point, our running backs are Saquon, Damian Pierce, Jamal Williams, Raheem Mostert, and Jeff Wilson. Our wide receivers are Waddle, Metcalf, Ayuk, Godwin, Romeo Dobbs. Love that. My tight ends are Pat Fryermuth and Jake Ferguson. Uh, we got T-Law as our QB. Damn, y'all took Purdy, you son of a bitch. Kind of really wanted Purdy there. And Pickett, nice. All right, well, we're going to grab our second QB here because in these best ball drafts, you want to grab a second quarterback for sure. And listen, man, I I loved what I saw out of Russ yesterday. I fucking loved what I saw out of Russ. He was moving. He, was, he looked fast. He looked like throwback Russ. He looked like 2015 Russ. He looked like he could run a 4-5 flat right now. 
I'm telling you, he looks slim. He looked lean. I would go back. If there's anyone out there that actually wants a fucking edge in their dynasty or in their fantasy leagues right now, go back and watch Russ play yesterday, man. I'm super okay with him as my QB2 right now. Sorry about that. I had to take a call. But rest assured, I was making my picks while I was on that call. I'm about to order a bacon, egg, and cheese real quick. We'll talk about my picks in a second. My beautiful, flawless, unadultered picks. Y'all ready? You know what my order is? Mm, bacon, egg, and cheese, avocado, salt, pepper, ketchup, on a toasted everything bagel. Yellow American. We'll go bacon. We'll go some avocado. Damn, $3 for avocado. What the fuck? Secured. Mm, bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, everything. Baby. All right. Where we at, though? Let me make this last pick. Right now, we've got five running backs, seven wide receivers, two tight ends, two QBs. Again, if you're new to best ball, you draft a big-ass team. You don't actually make any sit-start or waiver wire additions. So you draft a large team, which is why the numbers at each position are fucking crazy. Which positions do we need the most help at? We got T-Law and Russell Wilson. You could probably make the argument that I need a third QB in case Russ actually falls flat on his face. Our wide receivers are crazy. Waddle, Metcalf, IU, Godwin, Dobbs, Parker Woods. So I don't think we need any more help there. Our tight ends are Pat and Jake Ferguson. You could go with Isaiah Likely there. I think what we probably need is another running back, though, because our running backs are a little bit weak. So let's go with um, – I'm going to grab – Josh Kelly here because I do think he's the number two in LA. What the fuck was that? That's not who I had in my queue. I did not queue up Trey motherfucking McBride. Oh man. All right. Whatever. We'll take McBride. Zach Ertz is off the pup list, is is ready to go apparently with his ACL, but they're not playing the preseason game. So unless Ertz plays at the next the next preseason game, I'm probably not really buying the fact that he's ready to go. So I guess McBride's fine. McBride was also the first tight end picked in his draft class. Let's not forget that. Zach, oh, we just talked about what Zach Ertz doing this year. Yeah, he ain't doing a goddamn thing. You can get three-fourths of an avocado for $3. Yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, um, to be fair, they do put, like, at least half an avocado on the sandwich, which I do appreciate, but still, like, legitimately, I feel like when I was younger, I would get a bacon, egg, and cheese for $3. Now I'm paying for an accessory on a goddamn bacon, egg, and cheese for the same price. Drafted from the 105, roast my team. Oh, say fucking less. Let me just throw some last player in the queue. Oh, you know what? We can still... Oh, someone definitely took Josh Kelly after I said that. God damn it. God damn. I know who I'm going to take at running back. I know what he deals. Ooh, I can go with either of those guys. All right, we'll just see what the queue ends up being. The 105, uh, if you want to be in the draft with me, if you want me to roast your team, again, go on Underdog. Use our promo code BDGE when you sign up. They'll double your deposit on there and make sure you are coming from the Discord. That's where we drop links to draft with us. 105, so you're Giants fan 31. That's already a tough start. C-Mac, not a guy I necessarily want to take in the top five. I think I would have taken Stefan Diggs over him if I had the choice. Alave at 2-8 is fine. Josh Allen at 3-5. I do like Terry McLaurin at the 4-8. It's cool by me. Same thing with Mike Will and Deontay Johnstein. Alvin Kamara at the 7-5. We do indeed love that pick. He's going to be a monster when he comes back. Uh, Rashad White, not a fan of, I think, by this point in the draft. Uh, take somebody else or try to find better value. This is like a good spot for uh, a tight end, especially because of the fact that you do not have one yet. Bateman at the 9-5, I like his good value. And Joku's cool as well. McKinnon, I like. It's a little early for McKinnon, in my opinion, just given the fact that he's really only going to catch passes um Higby's okay I would have preferred Musgrave I think hmm. Derek Carr fine with it uh DPJ Jalen Hyatt 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 I'm off of Hyatt I'm off of Chuba I hate yeah Chuba actually just got hurt you're drafting a bunch of bums at the end of your draft Slayton's kind of cool though Slayton seems to be the one over Hyatt so I'm I'm, I'm not mad Oh, you guys all want to get roasted. All right. I, I would I would give this team fucking three and a half clap. Three and a half flexes out of five. We got the nine pick. What do we got? We start off with Kelsey. That's a hard start. This is the earliest I've seen Christian Watson go. I'm not gonna lie. Three nine. So congratulations on holding that record. ETN a four four is all right. Kenneth Walker five nine is all right. 
I'm going to be honest. You got to fucking show with these rookie wide receivers. Addison, Quentin Johnson, back to back. Jameson William ain't playing half the goddamn year. Juju is fucking terrible. Van Jefferson at 12 4. What are you watching? What are you watching, sir? You want me to put you in a goddamn oven and gas you? Yeah, you're getting gas right now. This team might be the worst team I've ever seen. All right. So I'm sorry, guys. I can't get to everybody's team. Every single person on there is in here. I'll just say this, like just collectively, objectively, just terrible drafts from everybody all around except for 107. It's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Uh, we'll try to do this every Sunday going forward. We just dropped our vlog. So if you're watching this afterward, we have our NFL trivia channel, which we just play games and do a bunch of NFL trivia. We put all the vlogs on there now, so go check that out. But most importantly, if you want to support the brand, subscribe, hit the button that looks like this down below. But go to Underdog, download the app. Get our draft guide for free when you drop $10 on the platform and use promo code BDGE while you do so. You can come and draft with us via the Discord. Also free to join. Link down below. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow for the week two preseason recap. Mwah. Time to eat this motherfucking bacon, egg, and choice.